What's up everybody, Greg here with Lens Protego and Lens Rentals and welcome back to the channel. Now you might notice I'm in a different setup. I'm actually out in LA right now for Cine Gear 2019, but we're gonna talk about that in another video. In this one, we're gonna take a look at the ISO and exposure recovery test of the Red Ranger with the Monstro 8K Vista Vision sensor. Starting off with the ISO test, we're gonna go from 100 all the way up to 12,800 ISO, and then we're gonna look at exposure recovery under and overexposing at five stops to see how well we can bring this footage back. So let's get right into the ISO test. All right, so starting off with the lowest ISO that you can shoot in camera, you can bring this a little bit lower in post, you can bring it all the way down to 50 ISO, but what you can shoot in camera is ISO 250. And if you look in the upper right-hand corner, you can see our 300% crop in. And we're just gonna go through some of these pretty quick because we're going through all of the ISOs. So up to 400, still getting a really clean image. Going up to the next one at 500, pretty much the same, not really a ton of change there. 640, again, still really clean, definitely usable. 800, we're starting to see a little bit of noise in there, really only in the 300%. You can't see it in that wider shot of the full setup. Going up to 1,000, again, just a little more. 1,280, going up to 1,600. Up to 2,000, this is where it really starts to be a little bit more prominent in the color. You can really see that color shift start to come in with those green and magentas. But again, out in that wider shot, you're still really not seeing too much of that digital noise. Going down to 2,500, adding a little bit more, you're seeing a little bit more blotchiness in the colors, at least in the 300% crop in. Up to 3,200, adding a little more to that. And then up to 4,000. This is where it's starting to get really, really noisy. And you're starting to see a little bit of movement in the wider shot, which you weren't seeing before, going up to 5,000, a lot more in that 300% crop. But again, in that wider one, you're really not seeing it. And this is definitely still usable if you clean it up with a little bit of noise reduction. Going up to 6,400, this is where we're gonna start to see a lot of noise and even start to see a little bit of color shift in the shadow areas where that ISO is present and a lot of color noise there, as you can see in the 300% crop in. And then up to 12,800, just a ton of color noise, a huge shift towards the green in those shadow areas. So the thing to note with most of these ISOs is that you can really have a pretty clean image in that wider shop. When you start cropping in, that's where you're gonna to start to see a lot of that noise. So just think about using these ISOs only when you're gonna keep it as a wide shot and you're not gonna be punching in and reframing in post-production. So that was the high ISO performance test of the Red Ranger with the Monstro sensor. And as you can see, you can push this sensor pretty high, almost up into that 6400 ISO with a little bit of denoising in there. As you get into that 12,800, it definitely starts to fall apart and there's a lot more digital and color noise in there. So I would recommend staying below 6400 or even 3200 if you can get away with it. Next up, let's take a look at the exposure recovery test, starting with underexposure. Now onto our exposure recovery test, we're starting with our correctly exposed image right now, and we're gonna go underexposed first. So down to one stop underexposed. As you can see, we were able to bring that back and pretty much get all the colors and really no noise in those shadow areas. So one stop is totally fine. Going to two stops underexposed, we're still able to bring this back, but you are seeing a little bit of noise in there. It's not color noise, so this is definitely still usable. To three stops underexposed, again, a little bit more graininess in there, but still no color noise. I think you'll see that if you start to punch in, but keeping it in the wider shot, you're not really seeing it. To four stops underexposed, you're definitely seeing a color shift into green with the shadows and a lot more color noise and definitely some moving around of that digital noise. And then five stops, yeah, this is definitely unusable, getting some of those magentas in there as well as the like overall green shift, and this is probably gonna be unusable. Going back to our correct exposure, and now we're gonna go in the opposite direction, so overexposing the image and seeing how much we can bring back in the highlights. So going to our one stop overexposed first, we're definitely able to bring all of that back. The key places here is to look on the right side of my face as well as the mug on the shelf up above me and the white painter's wheel on the right side of the frame. Going to two stops, still able to bring all of those highlights back and it's looking really good, some really nice color in there as well. Down to three stops. Again, no clipping or loss of detail in any of those white areas, either on my face or those white items behind me. And then once we jump up to four stops, this is where it pr falls apart pretty quickly. It drops right off, we're losing detail in my face, being completely blown out, as well as the white board. We're getting a little bit of color shift as well, leaning to those greens, and we're losing some detail. And then as you'd expect, five stops overexposed is pretty much the same thing. All of those brighter areas are completely gone and you're not gonna be able to get any of that information back. And that was the exposure recovery test of the Red 
Ranger. As you can see in both directions, you can go about three stops under and three stops over to be able to recover it pretty easily in post-production. Now the red workflow is a little bit different because you do have that raw file, so you definitely have a little more flexibility to change like your ISO. You can change your exposure on the master clips instead of just doing a curve adjustment to get those colors and the exposure back. If you want to see more sample footage and learn more about this camera, there's going to be a couple of links in the description down below as well as at the end of this video. So definitely check those out if you're interested in this camera. And also if you have any questions about the test we ran or the camera itself, make sure to leave those in the comments below. If you guys enjoy this video, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe for new videos every single week, and I'll see you in the next one.